Today's lecture is fairly short. Uh, what we're going to be covering is function declarations, and then we're going to add in a char type. So last lecture, uh, we added if statements, while loops, and for loops. Um, you can see that behavior here. And then today's goal is uh, we want our programs to look like this. Um, we're going to add in function a, a single function declaration. Uh, we're only going to handle the main function right now, although most of the code we write is going to carry over really well to uh, multiple function definitions. Um, I finally get to use C syntax highlighting in my code samples, which is cool. Um, and uh, previously, I explained that all of our compound statements would be surrounded by braces, and this is why because you can't really have a whole lot of statements in C that aren't inside of a pair of braces. So, um, yeah. And uh, to accomplish this, we really could just, you know, add in a very specific parser that hard codes a lot of behavior. But uh, ideally, again, we'd like to generalize our code to, so that it works in the future for other stuff. So we're also going to be updating our uh, type system so that we can store function return types and uh, so that we can better control our LLVM values and whatnot. So that's what we're doing today. So here's the plan. We are going to add in a function declaration parser. We are going to modify our type system so we can store the return types of functions. We are going to update our preamble and our postamble generators to support multiple function declarations. And then we are going to add a char type. Um, and we're also going to build a framework for adding other types, which was homework a while ago. But in case you didn't do it, you're kind of going to get an answer now. So we do have to hard code some of the behavior. Um, we haven't implemented return statements, so we do need our return values to be void, but we do want to, you know, add in that support for the future. Um, we're not going to support function arguments for a while, not for another few lectures, so we're just going to match an open and close parenthesis. Um, here, let me pull up the code for this. So, yeah, so we're going to match in a void because we don't have any return statements yet. Um, we are going to you know, get our function identifier. Uh, we will uh, add it to the global symbol table. Um, this is a type class. We're going to look at that in a second. Uh, match a left and right parenthesis. And then um, we are going to just return a AST node that contains the contents of a parse statements return because parse statements is doing all that stuff now as we saw in the last lecture or lecture before maybe. Um, let me pull my notes on my screen. PCD, function declarations. Okay. So now we're going to look at the new type system. So I've added this file called types.py. Um, we can see that I've moved in uh, the number type class into here. But we also have this number class, uh, which is going to store a number type and a value. So we've taken the value out of uh, number type, and uh, we have put it into this number class, just to make a distinction there. Um, realistically, we didn't need both, but it's going to just make things more uniform when we deal with functions and structs later on. Uh, so we've got this function class that all it contains is a return type. Um, and then we have this big type class. So everywhere that we used number type in the past, we're basically going to replace it with type now um, because eventually we want to call functions. So um, when we're parsing expressions, we'll want to check for not just number types, but you know the overall types of things. Um, so a type has a token. 
type in it. And then it's got some contents, which are either a number or a function right now. Um, so again, you know, I said that we were going to replace all of our number type stuff with number. Well, we're also going to wrap that in a, in a type object because, again, uh, that makes our code more general and eventually we'll be able to expand it to deal with function calls also. Um, we've got this LLVM representation uh, function that just <coughs> lets us uh, print stuff out in LLVM really easy, which is nice. Um, we've also updated the, oh yeah, we've updated the global symbol table or the, the symbol table class um, to accept in types. So uh, for example, whenever we parse a declaration statement, um, we're going to uh, pass in a number that converts the token type that you give it into a number type and default value of zero. Um, you can see up here that in match token, we've changed both the input type and the output type of the function. And I'm gonna explain that in a second when we get to the char types. Have either of you two implemented the additional integer types homework? Not yet. Okay, so this is a new idea. Cool. Um, All right, and so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna look at our uh, generator statements, our generator changes. Uh, so let's look at translate.py. So the big change here is that we've moved stuff, we've moved our uh, I'll put the right chunk right here and expand this a bit. Okay, so yeah, we've just changed the structure of um, how our generate LLVM function looks right now. So previously, we would generate our LLVM preamble, which had all of our um, memory architecture stuff, and then it had at the bottom of it, it had the header for our main function. And then we would parse statements, we would allocate, we'd convert it to an AST, and then we'd generate our post table. And now we've condensed all of this down into a single while loop that says, as long as we don't have an end of file, we're going to parse in a function declaration, and then we're gonna convert it to, um, to LLVM. And if we jump up to here, you can see that this is our, uh, section of special tokens that need to do special things instead of regular tree traversal. So I've added a case here for the function type. Um, type checking, don't worry about that. Uh, but here we've added in an LLVM function preamble function that we didn't have before. So we still generate um, our, all of our memory architecture preamble stuff up here. But um, our function preamble is gonna be different uh, we are going to do our stack allocation. We are going to convert that AST to LVM. So that's all the contents of the function. We're going to generate a post sample and then we return none. So not a whole lot has changed here. We've just kind of moved some code around. Uh, I will show you this real quick. Yeah, so this is just our defined statement. Um, we give it the representation of the return type uh, from this uh, global symbol table entry that we called up here. And then we give it a function name and we just open up some brackets. Um, so funny story when I was working on this uh, when I was writing this lecture, I was referencing the purple code that does the same thing. And in the purple code, when I added in function declarations, I realized that um, I was generating, I was doing my stack allocation 
before calling AST to LVM, which if you think about it, that would print out all of those allocate statements right before the actual function header. And so the genius that I am, I decided to do it the smart way. And I would write this complicated buffer of allocation statements that were trying to be printed before the header and then once the header was printed, then I would look in the buffer and I would print out all the extra allocation statements and it added a bunch of uh, global data that um, I realized I didn't need when I was writing this lecture because you can just move the stack allocation after the preamble of the function. I'll, I'll show you the purple code. It's, I don't know, I just thought it was funny that I over-engineered it so much without realizing that I could have just moved one statement. Um, The preamble is just like the define main brace. Yeah. It, it's a. Uh, uh, I can. Yeah. I'll, I should show you what a function declaration looks like again. Oh, I've already got one. So that's the, the function preamble right there. Uh, I could just call it function header. I guess I probably should to distinguish it from this preamble up here. Um, no. So yeah, this is our regular preamble. This is what I called the function preamble. This is the function postamble. And this is the postamble. I should rename that. But um, let me show you. Yeah, so I had, um, you know, this is our stack entries, um, and yeah, so when you're doing stack allocation, if the current function preamble has not been printed, then you're going to uh, add the stack entries to the buffered stack entries list. And then when you print your preamble, if you have any buffered stack entries, then you're going to print them and then empty out the list, which is silly because why would you go through all that extra work? It's because I wasn't thinking too hard about it, but I thought it was a little funny that I noticed something stupid about my code months after I wrote it. But yeah, so Echo does the easy thing. I, I did write it the wrong way at first, and then I went back and I was like, there's no reason this shouldn't work. Anyways. Uh, for adding in the char type, um, uh, yeah, so match token, we updated the type of it, uh, where is it, yeah, so it's now taking in either a token type or a list of token types. Um, so you can check just one or you can try to match multiple. So I, I forgot to mention, I've added a char token type, right? Because we want to parse characters now. Um, and when we're declaring a variable, we want some way of declaring all kinds of variables. We don't want an int, int declaration parser and a char declaration parser. So um, now it's going to uh, check through, um, you know, the list if it is a list or it's just going to compare against that one. So we can pass in both char and int and uh, now we're going to return whatever value we got from the token and we're going to return the token type that it matched to. So um, that is going to uh, make our declaration statement a little simpler. So yeah, we pass in int and char. We want the token type that it matched to. Um, and then we are going to update our global symbol table, uh, new type object, uh, give it whatever token type we match to, and then we generate a number from the token type that we got. Um, and then aside from that, the changes are relatively minimal to the parser, so, or for the generator. So in a couple places, like right here, um, 
LLVM value has a third, it's always had a third argument, um, which is the number type, and it's always been um, auto assigned to int because that was the only number type that we needed. Uh, but now I've just explicitly said, um, in, you know, in this one case, uh, whenever you're uh, doing your register loading and duration, uh, you're just going to have to make sure that you're um, loading those values into registers of the same number type. Uh, there's a bunch of places where uh, I had to change, uh, you know, this weird hard-coded thing that I had into just their LVM representation of the number type. Um, again, all the same stuff here, just adding in explicit uh, definitions to uh, the LVM value number type. And that's more or less it, actually. So, again, really short lecture, but uh, it's been a rough past week for me. So, let me show you uh, the new examples. Test six. So kind of off the edge a little bit. Yeah, so we've got this void main. Looks like a C program mostly, except for that print statement that we're going to get rid of soon. But uh, scripts run, examples, test six. Let's debug. Don't worry about the output there. Um, test6.ll. So this should do the same thing that our for loop uh, tester did. It should just print 1 through 10. 1 through 10. There you go. And let's we can look at the LVM of it. Looks exactly like our old one did because that was the point. We just added a parser. But uh, it's a necessary thing. So the, the next step is going to be uh, adding in multiple declarations and then adding in function calls and once we add in function calls we can finally step away from our print statement we can uh, start passing stuff into real C compilers to get identical output so you came in right at the end this is a super super short one um, I had lots of lots of homework last week so anyways thanks for watching and stream yeah, right at the end <laughs> It's okay, it's not a big deal.